What's going on everybody? You know that we love basketball and that goes for everything from watching the NBA to following the performance basketball sneakers that players are wearing in the NBA. Wow. And today in this video, we're gonna be discussing, trying on, and analyzing the best performance kicks of the 2017 NBA season. So we are here today with Nelson Chan from Hoopin' Life, the basketball YouTube channel. Behind us, we've got the top 10 sneakers from this current NBA season, and we're about to break them all down. Let's, Let's go. go. Number one on the list, we got the newest NBA signature shoe, and it is Paul George from the Indiana Pacers' first signature shoe, Nike, Nike PG1s. PG1s. Paul George has been very good for quite a long time. Long time, long time. Are you surprised it took him this long to get his own signature sneaker? A little bit, but no, well deserved. I think Paul George would have got this sneaker way before if he was playing on a bigger market team. I thought Paul George should have had his own shoe the second he did that 360 windmill on the fast break, like, what was that, three seasons ago? This is probably, along with the Kyrie one, the best looking introductory signature shoe ever. And these are only 110, which is super cheap for a shoe nowadays, especially one that looks like this. Let's talk about the tech of the PG one. You got a one piece inner booty, that's super comfortable. You got this fly wire strap on the forefoot. That's for extra stability. It actually works. And then you got the forefoot bottom loaded zoom that's protruding. Nelson, you as well as some other sneaker review channels have probably dubbed this the sneaker of the year. Performance wise, absolutely sneaker of the year. You pretty much get everything you want in a hoop shoe, especially for the price of 110. Super affordable. I would say the only bad thing about the shoe would be the insole. Insole is not as durable. The insole inside tends to rip and roll over. So the traction pattern is based off fish scales in honor of Paul George's love for fishing, all right? Nike really delivered great value in all aspects of the shoe except for one thing, which is the insole. So for the Nike PG1 at 110, is it a cop or drop? It's unanimously a cop. cop. I already got two pairs. <laughs> <laughs> Number two on our list, we got the Nike, Nike Kyrie, Kyrie 3. This is a fan favorite. This is a very guard shoe, and it's largely because there's not too much cushioning in the forefoot. Not for big dudes, not for stocky dudes like David. Traction is good, but not as good as the ones and twos. If they allowed full zoom versions of these and they were better for wide foots, I would definitely get the Kyrie. Overall, I feel like the Kyrie 3 is a solid shoe. One thing that's not good for me is the breathability of the shoe. These shoes get no ventilation at all. After hooping in these a couple hours, your foot and the shoe inside will be super soaked. This is such a unique shoe, especially in how the sole is shaped and it's made specifically for Kyrie, who is a dribbling machine. I feel like if you're also a dribbling machine, or at least you want to be, then you gotta get these. So Nike Kyrie 3, cop or drop, it's gonna be a drop. Coming up at number three, we've got the Adidas Harden, Harden Volume, Volume 1. 1. Also, a first signature shoe for James Harden. This is, in my opinion, the best looking basketball shoe of the 2016-2017 NBA season. They wore the Hardens a couple times. The, the trash is not that good. Boost is kind of the new tech that's on the scene. Everybody's talking about Boost it. Boost is life. Boost, to me, is more of a running, casual technology. Based off my sneaker review on these, uh, comfortability-wise, slipping in, it feels really good. Uh, but the thing about the leather toe caps, is that you get this pinch on your toe right here. Lacing system is not good. You don't get that smooth pull when you tie your shoelaces. It's thinner compared to other, you know, boost uh, basketball shoes, so you don't get that impact protection as well. But you do get a lot of core feel, like Andrew said. All right, you guys, the Adidas Harden Volume 1, cop a drop. Woo, I would say it depends on how you play, but definitely try them on. I would say it's a cop if you're gonna rock them casually, but for my player preference, it's not a cop for me. Yo, I'm gonna give these away. You were a cop, but now you're about to drop. All right, coming in at number four, we got the Adidas, Adidas Crazy Explosive Low. Low. Probably one of the most heavily anticipated shoes of this season. Topped off a lot of that extra stuff that kind of look goofy. It has everything that's pretty much the same. It even has the same amount of lace loops. Both the Crazy Explosive Mid and Low is heavily regarded as the best performance sneaker of 2017. Woo, yo, that's a big statement. It is. If you don't really care about how the shoe looks, you just want an awesome performance shoe, this is the shoe for you. This shoe pretty much has everything. Cushioning, traction, support, overall comfort, on point. The lows just came out, so not that many people are wearing them, but we got Thon Maker, we got Brandon Ingram, hey, Kyle, Kyle Lowry. Lowry. Invest in the extra $20. The time is 10 out of 10. All right, Adidas Crazy Explosive Low, copper drop, it's gotta be a cop. cop. Coming up at number five, we've got the Nike, Nike LeBron, LeBron 14. This okay. is a good looking shoe. We said in the previous video last year, that Nike had to bring it with the LeBron 14 because the LeBron 13 was a disaster. You couldn't move in them. For me, I had really, really high hopes for this shoe performance-wise. Mm -hmm. I was so excited. Ended up being okay. 
And so this shoe actually feels great when you tie it up at first. At first, I thought this strap would really contain your foot. It kind of does, but only for the midfoot. It doesn't help to prevent any type of heel slippage at all, too. I've never been a fan of the Podular Zoom. It doesn't make any sense. It makes it so your foot only hits the those floor certain spots, certain yeah. sections. I feel like you're stepping on Lego blocks. You know what I'm talking about? It's like you have a bunch of Lego blocks on the front. You step on it, just like a bunch of steps, you know, pressing against yeah. your foot. And I feel like the feeling that you always get when you try on LeBron is like, yo, I'm ready to go to war. Like, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. And then you're just like, Nike LeBron 14, copper drop, drop. drop. Another highly anticipated shoe coming in at number six. We got the Adidas, Adidas Dame 3. The Dame 2 was considered the best value shoe of 2015, 2016. The Dame 3, a disappointment. And this Oh! First of all, this shoe ended up being super clunky. The midsole is very plush and stable, and the upper, if you just walk up a hill or down a hill, it's just not the right balance. It's not the right balance. When you actually hooping in them, the range of motion is just not there. Okay, speaking of bounce, real quick, we got the Alpha Bounce right here. Personally, I like it better than Boost because I'm a very zoom air guy. Adidas has three levels of cushion: Boost, Bounce, and they have Ada Cream Plus. Yeah, exactly. So this traction pattern, you got straight lines, side lines. Vertical lines, the lacing system, they have these two panels right here that give you customized, adjustable lacing options. It's just a hassle. It's, you don't get that smooth transitioning when you pull the strings, just like the Hardens. It's a shame to me that they made the shoe better looking, but the performance went down. All right, the Adidas Dame 3 Copper Drop, it's a drop. drop. Coming in at number seven, we've got the Under Armour Curry 3s. North Carolina, wave Curry 3. No one's waving the Curry 3s. I hate to say it, Curry 3 this year was a flop. Some people consider his season relative to last season a flop. You flop, you flop. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that is the foam that, you know, that molds to your foot. They are super light. This traction actually looks a lot like the Clutch Fit Drives. This was based off the Golden State Bridge. They're, They're just setting you up for net the yeah. curry four. Yeah. Yeah. You lose a three one plus one lead. Three plus one is four. Oh! Overall copper drop, I think it's gotta be a drop. drop. Number eight, we've got the Nike, Nike Zoom, Zoom Lives. Lives. When you talk about the Nike Zoom Lives, you gotta talk about the price point. These are a hundred dollars. How many shoes do you get Zoom Air, top loaded Zoom Air in the forefoot and a strap that's effective. This traction pattern is crazy, and like I said, the little short lines here is gonna make it even better, and they're deep grooves. This is probably in the same category as the Nike Hypership, which is also $100. There's zoom in the heel, but nothing in the forefoot, mm -hmm. so the live is a better combination. Nike, just put, put the, the zoom, zoom in, in the, the front. front. The Nike Zoom Live, cop or drop. <laughs> it's $100, it's one you, Benji. You have to copy. Number nine, we've got the Nike Kobe ADs. As a big guy, they do not have enough cushioning in the fourth row because they have this weird segmented lunar one. The Kobe AD is probably one of the better Kobe's in the last five years. For me, more responsive than the last couple years. You know, I'm more into the responsiveness. Cushioning, like David said, is not quite there, but uh, good enough for me. The stability, I have no complaints. They have a really good heel lockdown. A shoe that's that light, cut that low with that much lockdown, I don't think anything could beat a Kobe. This rubber outrigger is actually really soft and bends. A little unstable at first just because it dragged. This outrigger just completely rolls over and rips. It ripped on me. Is the Nike Kobe AD a cop or drop? I have to say it's a cop. I'm gonna say it's a cop. I'm, I'm gonna go with drop. Cop. Last but not least, the shoe that I have personally spent the most time in this season would be the Air, Air Jordan, Jordan 31. 31. This is shoe is built on an extremely wide base. It's based off the Air Jordan 1. For me, the full length zoom is unbeatable. You right. see that? That looks nice. The traction needs to be oh better. My. There is a problem a little bit with the arch support. I actually bruised the middle of my foot yeah. one time in these. As such a wide player that needs the impact protection, I have to put the Jordan 31 as my favorite shoe, of despite all the flaws. It's a good shoe, but it's not a best shoe for me. Okay. It's leather that turns into knit. That's crazy. Is the Jordan 31 a cop or drop? I definitely gotta say it's a cop. Not that it's a perfect shoe, but it is the perfect shoe for me this yep. season. For you guys, it is a drop. All right, you guys, of the 10 shoes that we listed, which one was your personal favorite? I'm already gonna wear the Nike Zoom Lives, but I'm actually very excited after talking about these. I'm excited to wear a pair of these. Crazy explosive lows. I like the Jordan 31, just cause I feel like it's built for me. I gotta go with the PG1, man. Number one in the comment section below, make sure you let us know what was your favorite sneaker of the 2016, 2017 NBA season. Number two, make sure you let us know about some sneakers that we didn't cover, as well as some sneakers that you're excited about. And number three in the comments below, make sure you give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and share this video with anybody who likes performance basketball sneakers or just likes basketball in general. All right, you guys, huge shout out to Nelson from Hoopin' Life. And until next time, we're out. Peace. Peace.
All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching that video. I know you guys keep telling us to do more sneaker material, and trust me, it is coming in the future. All right, everybody, thanks for watching that video. Until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.